Hi everyone! This week we've been making hay. So it's coming up to the end of May and it's been gorgeous weather here which means that we've been able to cut our first cut of hay. It's a bit earlier than we would have hoped and the grass hasn't quite grown as much as we'd like but you've got to take your opportunity here with the weather because it's so unpredictable. Um, what usually happens is that we see that it's going to be dry for a week or two and then we cut and then the weather forecast changes and then we're worried about rain and then we're in a bit of a rush and a panic but um, it is what it is. Um, the weather here is really changeable but we had a long stretch of lovely looking weather ahead of us so we did take the opportunity to cut and then what happens if, if the weather turns against us then we can always bale it a bit wetter and then wrap it for haylage. Um, we do provide both hay and haylage for our liveries and we sell a bit as well on the side so we are making both but it's always nice to get some hay done with our first cut and then also we've got some hay out of the way so it takes the pressure off with the later cuts later in the year. So this week we cut about 40-ish acres and we were hoping for around 150 bales. I think we got close to that. Um, so I'm just going to show you some clips of us cutting, turning, raking, baling and then moving the bales around to make it easier to pick them up later. So we leave them out field for about a week after they've been baled. So they cool off if you were to bring them in straight away and stack them and put them in a barn, they can heat up and then you can get barn fires. So that's why we leave them out field for about a week after we've baled them. So here we are cutting. So this is with the big tractor with um, a class mower on the back. And this is turning the next day and you can already see the difference um, that overnight has had on the grass. You can see that where it's still rowed, where the mower left it in rows, that it's quite dry on top. And then when the turner comes along and flicks it, it exposes all the, um, the wet grass from underneath. And already you can see the difference that it makes just the next day. So then there was a lot of turning. Um, Dad went out and turned it. Um, most days, twice a day, um, for a good four or five days. And of course this varies every year um, with every cut, depending on how hot it is, how windy it is, which field it is. Um, the grass obviously lying under the trees dries slower. Um, we've got some land that's quite high up and that dries quite quickly, even though it tends to be a heavier crop it dries quite quickly because it's windy and I suppose it gets the air underneath it so um, but I think this time it was around five days of turning twice a day. and then rowing it up with our twin rotor rake. And here we are baling. Um, so we only do round, big round bales now, and we just find that that works better for us, for the way that our livery yard works and also for selling them. So um, when we sell them, we tend to deliver them and it makes it a lot easier for us to just take them on the two bale spike on the tractor or on the handler and then we can deliver them like that because we only tend to run the odd bale around to local livery yards to us. Thank you. 
And of course, our supervisor has to go along and check that everyone is doing what they should. And then I go round and round up the bales. So because they're being left out in the field for a week or so until they've cooled off, um, I basically go around the field and collect them up and leave them in a neat line along the hedge. Uh, this just makes it easier for bringing them in and it means that I can put them in a sensible place as well to check that they're safe. Um, so for example, some of our fields are near a town, so I don't want to put leave them right at the top of a hill where it's easy for people to roll them down hills because people do do that sort of thing. Even though it is incredibly dangerous, they're really, really heavy and they pick up a lot of speed as they're rolling down so they can do some serious damage and take out hedges, cars, people. Um, but so yeah, I basically want to check they're all in a sensible, safe place and make it easier for bringing them in later on. So I leave them in a nice, neat line. So sometimes I use the tractor with the two bale spike on the back. And um, what I actually prefer using is the handler. Um, so yeah, I use either of those. This year, I mostly use the tractor with the two bale spike. Last year, I mostly used the handler. Um, with the tractor, you're looking backwards a lot. Um, but with the handler, it's in front of you, so it's easier to see. So I prefer using the handler, but I can do either. And then during all this, we also had some fertilizer delivered. So I unloaded that. Um, so there was only three bags this time. And this is so that we can um, get some on our fields that have already had a first cut, um, which our neighbors had as a standing crop for silage. So they've already had the first cut off that and it started growing again. And we've heard that it's gonna rain fairly soon. So we wanna get some fertilizer on before that happens. And then there's dad loading it up into the spreader and then going out and spreading it. I think that brings us up to date with where we're at with our first cut of hay. So it's all cut, it's all baled, it's just waiting out the field to be brought in. And then that is our first cut done. So hopefully we'll get three cuts this year, especially with having cut so early. Um, but thrilled to have some hay done without any rain on it. It's fairly unheard of in May and especially in this part of the country where it rains basically constantly. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing the process that we go through to make our hay. Check out my last video if you'd like to see a day of chain harrowing and horse paddock maintenance. And then we've also been trying our hand at growing some mushroom logs. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that video in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will speak to you guys soon. Bye.